Let's bring in our regular Monday panel, Peter McGoran, former Howard Minister and Senior Advisor at Bondi Partners now, and Simon Banks, former Labor Advisor, now with uh, Hawker Britain, the Managing Director there. Simon, the Prime Minister was on Sunday Agenda. He, he said uh, in our interview with him that politics has changed, that when it comes to the voice, he, he appeared quite sanguine about the fact that the opposition is not supporting the voice. He believes that it can still be won in the face of that opposition from the Liberal Party. Yeah, look, I mean, if you look at the history of referenda, uh, they've tended to require bipartisan support in order to get up. But we are, it's true, we are in a, in a transformed political environment at the moment. If you go back to the last set of referenda in 1988, the combined major party vote between Labor, Liberal and National was well up into the 80% mark, well above. Well, at this most recent federal election, it was basically around 70%. So there's a whole group of voters, somewhere between 10 and 15% of voters, that we've seen go to minor parties of the left and the right, whether it's the Greens, One Nation, the Teals or whatever. So there's a much broader group of the electorate out there that have got a view about this. They're not tied to one particular political brand or another. And they'll be the people who will probably decide the outcome of this referendum. Peter McGoran, to have voted in the last referendum held in this country, you'd have to be... Uh, over 40, so there, there is a whole cohort that the government, the Prime Minister and those arguing for a yes vote will be, will be hoping to win over, regardless of political stripe. Correct. Peter Dutton, the Liberal Party's position on this is entirely principled, it's logical and it's courageous, but politically it's disastrous. I very much fear that the Liberals will have dealt themselves uh, out of a whole number of debates in the years to come. They should have, in my view, uh, argued for, in, in favour of a referendum change, which they have, but the one the Prime Minister has tabled and undertaken to seek to uh, alter it and amend it in the way in the, in the areas they, f they feel concerned about when the legislation comes back to the Parliament. Two reasons, Kieran. One, no one understands constitutional law. It's a very nuanced point. It's plain uh, to, to those of us who've got a law degree or study in politics, but we don't teach civics in our schools. They've got People have got no idea, basically, of what Peter Dutton's talking about, that if you change the Constitution by amendment, you can never again change it except by another referendum. And secondly, Australians have no interest in Aboriginal affairs. I'm sorry, but after a lifetime of dealing with public policy uh, in, in the parliament, Australians don't want to know the problem. They, they're kind-hearted, so they think this is a good thing to go along with, and Prime Minister Albanese is very persuasive on it, and everybody's going to campaign for it. Who's going to say no? What, what business, what sporting organisation, which individual, Warren Mundine and Jacinta Price, highly credible, authoritative figures, They've got the courage to stand alone. But otherwise, the, the referendum is going to be carried. Probably not in, Queen, uh, in WA, certainly not in Queensland, but in every other state it will be carried quite by a significant margin. And New South Wales, I think they'll, they'll go along with it. So the referendum will be carried uh, quite convincingly. The Liberals should have found another way to do this. There are so many economic issues. This is an economically literate government on energy policy, on productivity, on industrial relations and, and, and on budget management, fiscal policy. And yet everything's going to be about the Liberal Party and their negativity for at least a year. Simon, that's an interesting analysis from Peter there as to where the, the voice in the referendum goes. The, the other point that the Prime Minister told Sky News was that the Solicitor General's legal advice would be made clear in time for the referendum. Well, Kieran, I expect, for example, the Solicitor General to be called before the uh, Parliamentary Joint Committee, which is going to be considering the legislation for the referendum. He may not table his formal legal advice, but I'm sure he will give a view. And, of course, we actually know what that view is. Well, a, we've heard it from the Attorney-General, we've heard it from the Prime Minister, and, of course, we've actually heard it from the referendum uh, working group that he expressed that opinion to. Essentially, what he and the Attorney-General did is they came forward and suggested a change in the words to the referendum question. The referendum working group said, 
no, we are not really comfortable about that change in words. So they went away, came back with a second form of words, and the, rec recommend, uh, the referendum working group adopted those words, and that's the final word that came in the question. Peter Dutton, I've got to say, is arguing a very bizarre point here. He seems to know better that, that what Mark Dreyfus thinks and what the Solicitor General Stephen O'Donoghue thinks. This is a bizarre argument. The Solicitor General knows what he thinks, Mark Dreyfus knows what he thinks. They think it's sound, as do the vast majority of legal constitutional experts in this country. Peter McGoran, it might, it might be politically sound for, for Peter Dutton to undertake, as, as you said, a, a different approach and, and Simon Banks making the argument in legal terms. But it was a diabolical question for him to have to try and answer, given the Liberal... Uh, branches, as far as I'm aware, most Liberals that I've been speaking to would suggest that the, the base, the Liberal branches, yeah. do not support this and and therefore how do you bring the party with, with you on such a, a delicate issue and try and navigate that? Exactly, Kieran, and, and, and Peter Dutton has my uh, unqualified admiration for the way he's kept the United, uh, Liberal Party united. And, and it's true, more wider than the Liberal Party, 40 to 45% of Australians are going to vote against it. They deserve to have their voice heard and not be ridiculed and mocked and uh, criticised for having a different point of view. And a lot of them will pick up on the legal argument that Peter Dutton is expressing. But the Liberal Party is all over the shop. We have Simon Burning, Birmingham, the leader of the Liberals in the Senate, opting out completely in... in um, saying that I'll leave the debate to those who have stronger, uh, stronger interest in it. I mean, I mean, so he's tried to keep the Liberal Party together, had a conscience vote, which is in, in contrast to all the understood criteria for conscience votes within the Liberal Party. So you're right, Peter Dutton was, was given a Sophie's choice. Uh, whichever way he went, there would be ruptures and disappointments because people want the Liberal Party to stand for something. My argument is... This is not the issue on which to stand. And I'm someone who was scarred by the Howard government's experience of not apologising, because we were told there'd be compensation claims and, and, and everything associated with that. Well, there was an apology by Kevin Rudd, which Australians overwhelmingly endorsed, and there was no compensation claims. So everyone says this will lead to a treaty. Well, there's no guarantee of that. This is the, this is the worst course of actions the Liberals could have adopted. It's not going to unite them. There's going to be pretty ugly, I think, internal ructions by a number of uh, small L Liberals already speaking out, but it's not Peter Dutton's fault. The Liberal Party at this stage in its history on an issue like this cannot be united. Peter McGoran, Simon Banks, gentlemen, great to see you both. Pleasure. Thank you.